Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Night Healing School. So glad to be here with you guys tonight. Again, you know, uh, we've changed Healing School up a little bit in the area. We're still meeting every Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., but we're doing it, of course, online only. So we are going to be doing that until some things change. Ultimately, guys, the whole goal and the whole purpose and heart and vision behind it is to be out there in the community amongst the people, well, where Jesus was when he was healing the sick. So that's what we're ultimately looking to. If you guys know of any place out there that would be willing to host us going in and doing healing school, we would love to hear from you. Coffee shop, business, whatever it is. Hey, we don't know unless we ask. So with that being said, we're throwing that out there. If you guys know of any place open that would allow us to get in and be a blessing to them as they're being a blessing to us being able to get out there, please feel free to contact www.twoguysinabible.com to let us know. We would love to look into that. Guys, got some announcements real quick. We're here every Tuesday until we get back out in the public, 6.30 p.m., online only for Tuesday Night Healing School. Every Wednesday, we are doing Wednesday Night Church at the MHC at 7 o'clock p.m. That is at 728 North Main Street, Lori, Missouri, at the Midwest Healing Center, 7 o'clock p.m. Again, Pastor Don is doing a series on, well, who in the world are you? You know, sickness is going to ask that. Demons and devils are going to ask that. The demonic is going to ask, well, who in the world are you to tell me that I can't stay in this person or that I have to leave as a sickness and disease. Well, it's because we're sons and we're daughters. And we're gearing up to get to the strip on the Luby stage this summer. And what perfect thing to know on the subject of who you are in Christ, but who in the world are you? Well, you're everything that God said that you are, and you can do everything that God said you can do. So we need you at the church, 728 North Main Street, Lower Missouri, Midwest Healing Center, every Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. for the series for Who in the World Are You? And of course, Fridays, we're doing Friday night prayer. Yes, we are doing it at the church some, but we're trying to get very comfortable on being down at the Luby stage on the Strip and Lake Ozark. And I made a mention about us doing it this Friday, totally forgot um, that we're not doing it this Friday. We will resume the following Friday with hopefully weather permitting. Some days it's chilly, other days it's 75. Imagine that. We will always pay attention to the weather. And if it's weather permitting and we need to do it at the church at 728 North Main Street, the Midwest Sewing Center in Lloyd, Missouri, of course we will. But if not, we want to get feet on the ground down at the strip so we can be down there getting used to the scenery, people getting used to us. So when that time comes, we're not doing it then. We're ready to hit the ground running. So with that being said, this Friday, there will be no prayer. We want you to be with your family, maybe some family that's coming in or maybe you're traveling. So this Friday, no prayer at the strip and no prayer down at the church and Lori. And again, Sundays, church at the MHC, 10 o'clock a.m. every Sunday. We want you there. And it's so neat because we do online as well as of course we're meeting in person but it's neat to do online the thing that's neat about it is man we have so many families and people out there that watch online even in different states and it's neat because mhc we're their family and i love that that we're able to reach more than just the people in the room we're broadcasting out there and we're getting people to hear the good news of the gospel and i love that part of it so with that being said tonight guys uh, we're going to get into this. One more announcement that is very important. Um, well, we'll go ahead and get into it. That pertains to something different. But uh, I, I, we're going in the week of Easter. And I, you know, there's so much that happened within those days, during all those hours, from the beginning to the end, everything in between. There was so much that happened. But there's so much that we can look into tonight that has everything to do with healing. So tonight, you know, I just wanted to, I wanted to call it looking back. You know, a lot of times in life, you know, we're told that we don't want to look back anymore. We're not going that way. We're looking forward. But when it comes to healing tonight, I want us to look back. I want us to take a good hard look of everything that it took for Jesus to purchase healing for us. And it's funny because for a while, I'm going to talk about the forgiveness part. And the reason why I did that is if we look back and we're so sure and we're so secure in the forgiveness of sins, knowing that the blood of Jesus has already been shed, but though we always go back to remember what happened and we apply it for today. Well, because of the cross, 
I am forgiven. Because of the resurrection, I'm the righteousness of God. Well, we have to do the same thing with healing. Because of his beating and scourging, I am now the healed of the Lord. So tonight I want us to take a good long look behind us to see just what happened on that Friday before Easter Sunday. Right after the release of prisoner that was evidently guilty of his charges, we know that he committed murder in an uprising riot. Then, but though they arrested Jesus, who was not guilty at all. Let's look at that. Let's look at Mark chapter 15, verses 1 through 15. Of course, this is in the Passion. It says, Before dawn that morning, the ruling priest, the elders, the religious scholars, and the entire Jewish council, they set in motion their plan against Jesus. They bound him in chains. They took him away and they handed him over to Pilate. As Jesus stood in front of the Roman governor, Pilate asked him, So, are you really the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, You have just spoken it. Then the ruling priest over and over made bitter accusations against him, but he still remained silent. So Pilate questioned him again, Have you nothing to say? Don't you hear these many uh, allegations that they're making against you? But again, Jesus offered no defense to any of the charges. But to the astonishment of Pilate, every year at Passover, it was the custom of the governor to pardon a prisoner and release him to the people, anyone that they wanted. Now Pilate was holding in custody a notorious criminal named Barabbas. Man, this is so good. One of the assassins who committed murder in an uprising. So before we go any further, we already know that Barabbas, we already know, we already know that he's guilty. He's guilty. He, he's a prisoner. He's already been charged. The crowds gathered in front of Pilate's judgment bench, and they asked him to release a prisoner to them, as was his custom. So he asked him, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Pilate was fully, he was fully aware that the religious leaders had handed Jesus over to him because of spite and of pure envy. But the ruling priest stirred up the crowd to excite them, to ask for, man, for the murderer, for the murderer instead. I mean, a man that was not guilty, that had committed nothing at all when it came to, to, to crimes. He was not a criminal, a criminal at all. Jesus was not. But you're going to turn around and you're going to ask to release a murderer so you can turn around and you can take Jesus to the point to where they yell, crucify him? So Pilate asked him, what do you want me to do with this one that you call the king of the Jews? They all shouted back, crucify him. Why, Pilate asked, what evil thing has he done wrong to even deserve anything that you're, that you're saying right now? But they kept shouting out with a de deafening roar, crucify him at once. Because he wanted to please the people, Pilate released Barabbas to them. After he had Jesus severely beaten, listen, after he had Jesus severely beaten with a whip, made of leather straps and embedded with metal. He sentenced him to be crucified. See, the prophecy was being fulfilled that was spoken by Isaiah back in chapter 53, verses 3 through 5, when it said he was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom hid their faces, he was despised and was held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and he bore our sufferings. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds, it says that we are healed. Wasn't it funny that in 1 Peter 2, 23 through 24, now they're looking back. That was prophesied that what was going to happen back in Isaiah 53. But then Peter, when he was verbally abused, he did not return with insult. When he suffered, he would not threaten retaliation. Jesus faithfully entrusted himself into the hands of God, who judges righteously. 
He himself carried our sins in his body on the, on the cross so that we would be dead to sin and live for righteousness because it says our instant healing, it flowed from his wounding. Man, now that was in the Passion. I like what it says in the NIV as well. It says, when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate when he suffered. He made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Tonight, I want us to see that this is just as true for us right now as this scripture right here. Listen to this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, one of my favorite scriptures. It says, He canceled out every legal violation that we had in our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all, our sins, our stained soul. It says he deleted it all and they cannot be retrieved. It says everything that we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross and now permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Did you get that though? It says everything that we once were, that we once were in Adam. In Adam, what do we know? Well, in Adam was spiritual death, physical death, sickness, and all disease. All of that has been placed upon the cross because it was in Adam. Sin, sickness, and disease has been forever put to death. My question tonight is why do we so easily, why do we so easily go and receive the part of, even though that happened in the past, well, forgiveness of sins is for today. And because of what happened at the cross, I'm free today if I would receive that gift. Well, guys, there's more to the package than just the forgiveness of sins. Thank God for that part of the cross. But we never can forget the part that after they arrested Jesus, they brought him before Pilate. We just read it. They released the murderer. But they turned around and they took up Jesus. Did you know right after that, on that Friday morning, they turned around and they took Jesus in those same chains. Same chains. They hooked him up and they chained him to a post. And they beat him beyond human recognition. See, right after that, of course, we know it was the cross. But we can't forget the other part that spilt his blood. Just as much as, if not more, than what the cross did. Thank God for the cross. We can never get away from that. That provided forgiveness of sins. But my friends, we can't forget the part of the whipping post. And I'm going to bring you all this right now when it has everything to do with the forgiveness of sins because we're tying it together with healing. Now, there's so much out there when it comes to forgiveness of sins. I only am giving a handful that really stood out to me that I want us to get a hold of tonight. Look at Hebrews 9.22. This is in the NIV. It says, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. I know in my life, if I happen to mess up and do something that man, I knew that that was wrong, that was just foolishness and it was stupid for me to even enter into whatever it was that I committed sin in. I have to remind myself, Father, I thank you that for without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And I thank the Father, I thank my dad, my daddy God, my father, that because that blood was shed, I could look back on that and I could remind myself, it's been shed, I'm forgiven. I, I enter into that forgiveness. Why? Because blood has already been shed. It says, for without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Well, you know and I know there's not going to be any more blood shed. So if there won't be any more blood shed, then I have to look back at the blood that was already shed to pull that truth into my life right here and right now. Well, we're going to do the same for healing, my friends. My friends, no more blood is going to be shed. It has already happened. The blood has already been poured out from his body for the forgiveness of sins for all time, once and for all. We have to take a look back to see all this truth and all that this truth still stands firmly for us today. We are to look back and receive this truth by faith that grace freely gave to us, but it took the life and the blood of another to bring us this freedom. I want us to look at 2 Corinthians 5.19. This is in the Amplified. It says, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, 
not counting people's sins against them, but he canceled them out. It says that he has committed to us the message of reconciliation that is restoring to favor with God. Now, another translation says, God was in Christ, hugging the world to himself. I love that. It says, no longer keeping track of men's sins and has planted in us his concern for getting together. Another one says, for God was in Christ, restoring the world to himself, no longer counting men's sins against them, but he blotted them out, it says. That this is the wonderful message he has given us to tell others. Everything that we're reading is something that has already happened, but isn't it funny that, man, we want that to be true for us today. Or if not, hey, there would be no forgiveness for you or for me. But we do know that that is true. We know that that's true. Look at Hebrews 8.12. For I will be merciful and gracious toward their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. That's in the Amplified. Another one says, I will have mercy on their evil doing, and I will not keep their sins in mind. Another says, for compassionate will I be to their wrongdoings, and their errors will I surely not remember anymore. For me, that, that brings so much joy and freedom to me that I know that I can always look back and see something's already happened for me today. Forgiveness of sins is not going to happen. See, that's the neat thing that we get to do this summer when we go down to the Strip and Lake Ozark. That is the neat thing that we don't have to tell anybody out there, no matter what they're caught up in, no matter what they're doing. So religion will always put over their head shame. Well, you remember what you did. And if you don't remember, I do. And I'm going to remind you of it. That's what religion will do. And Satan's in the middle of all of it because he's the accuser of the brethren, my friends. Isn't it funny that the enemy wants to accuse you of what you did wrong? But Holy Spirit comes to remind you of everything that Jesus did right on your behalf. Thank God. Thank God for that truth right there. That we get to go this summer to the strip. What about the lady that had the abortion? What about the guy that has trap, mark, trap marks on his arms? What about that? There's so much that you could go into that people might be doing wrong in because me and you have done the same thing. But we don't get to go to them. Do you remember, you know, the, th the thing that got my attention when it came to the gospel, guys, I'm just going to be honest. <coughs> Excuse me. It wasn't pointing out to me everything that I did wrong because when I saw my reflection in the mirror, guys, it reminded me every day of everything that I did wrong. I didn't need help reminding myself of all the failures, all the sins, all the mistakes. What I wanted to hear was even in the middle of that, a father that loved me and never ran out on me. Even in the middle of stupidity and foolishness and ignorance and just flat out rebellion and disobedience. Like, I see that it's wrong. I'm going to do it anyways. He still loved me. He still loved me. They need to know, this world needs to know that no matter what you've done, no matter to the degree that you've done it, you have a father that is not holding any of that against you. He loves you and he wants you to receive him. He wants you to receive the payment for that. It says right here, look at this again. That is that God was in Christ restoring the world Restoring and reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them. Well, religion will remind you of what you did wrong, and the enemy will remind you of what you did wrong. But the gospel says in 2 Corinthians 5, 19, that God did not hold their sins against them. The world needs to know that. Why am I hitting so hard on this tonight with the area of the forgiveness of sins? Because isn't it funny that we look back and we receive that? Well, we need to look back and receive the healing part of it as well. We have to remember that this was all God's idea when it came to the forgiveness of sins and healing. No one's going to change his mind about you or about me, even if we sin and mess up. It plainly says here that we are forgiven. God's not holding anything against us. Christ paid the full price. 
Now we have to go tell the world that good news. Look at Colossians 2.13 in the Amplified. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, worldliness, manner of life, it says God made you alive together with Christ, having freely forgiven us all our sins. Even the ones that I haven't gotten to, you better hope so. Because if there's no forgiveness for that, well, what blood's going to be shed? Because there will be no more blood shed. See, it is a complete and a done deal. We can't forget all these benefits that have been given to us at all. Look at Psalm 103, 1 through 5. This is in the Passion. With my whole heart, my whole life, with my innermost being, I bow and wonder and love before you, the Holy God, Yahweh. You are my soul's celebration. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness you've done for me? You've kissed my heart with forgiveness. In spite of all I've done, you've healed me inside and out from every disease. You've rescued me from hell and saved my life. You've crowned me with love. You've crowned me with mercy. You satisfy my every desire with good things. You've supercharged my life so that I soar again like a flying eagle in the sky. I really like it in the Amplified too. It says, Bless and affectionately praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is deep within me. Bless His holy name. Bless and affectionately praise the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget any of His benefits, who forgive all your sins, forgives all your sins, and who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you lavishly with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your years with good things, man, so that your youth is renewed like the soaring eagle. Sometimes in a job, I know when I used to work at the prison, um, it was a very, very good job and they had great insurance. Did you know when I got hired on in the very, very beginning, I, I was brought to the HR lady, amazing lady, awesome, awesome, awesome friend, when I was brought before her, I was given all this paperwork to be able to sign and to be able to look over and to read and to understand. Sign here, initial here, show that you've read and that you've understood here. And I went through all of that. But did you know with all the benefits that came with that job, whether I was three weeks in, three years in, it didn't make a difference how long I worked there. It was very easy for me to forget some of the benefits that came in that package that the HR lady read to me that came just a part as being an employer of the state of Oklahoma. You know, and they were great benefits. It was some of the best insurance in the state, from vision to dental to medical to paid time off to everything that you can imagine that job offered. But did you know that I had to purposely know? It would have been like this. I could have took a day off. Maybe when I came back, my friend, man, did you enjoy your day? I, I did, man. It, I wish that I would have got paid for that day, but I enjoyed having time with family. And maybe my friend, maybe he would have looked at me and said, well, why did you take that day off without pay? You remember a part of the benefits package that you are given so many days um, time off, but you're getting paid time off. Are you serious? I didn't know. Well, yeah, I was in your benefits package. That wouldn't have been nobody's fault but my own. Why? See, the benefits package was there for me the whole time, but I forgot to partake in that part of it. Some people and a lot, they want to, they remember the benefits package of the, of, the, of the salvation part. Oh, I remember that I'm forgiven of all my sins and thank God for that. But they're dealing with sickness and disease and they forgot that, well, that was a part of the benefits package of, it says that, and who healed all your diseases. Guys, God wants us to remind us ourselves of the benefits package that was purchased through the blood and the cross and the whipping post of Jesus. It's not that God needs to hear about it. It was his idea. He doesn't need no remembrance of it. But when we talk to him about it, we're putting ourselves in very high remembrance of what was done so that we can walk on that freedom right here, right now. So again, just like I said, sometimes in a job, we can forget the benefits package that came to us the moment that we signed on to be hired for that employer. We can get so busy with life, the duties required, the workload. Sometimes we just need to go back, pull out the paperwork that explains all the benefits that are ours right here, right now. We can't forget the benefits of the forgiveness of sins, 
the past one, the present ones, and the ones that we might mess up in the future. But we also, we cannot forget about the benefits package when it comes to our healing in our mind, in our body. We can't forget about that. See, it's the very same way with the health part. It says who heals all of our diseases. This is not going to happen. It is already a done deal. The blood that it took, the body that was taken to be beaten beyond human recognition, it is finished. I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 52, verse 14 tonight. It says, just as many were astonished and appalled at you, my people. So his appearance, this was talking about Jesus. This was prophesying in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament of what was to come. And Isaiah said, so his appearance was marred more than any man, and his form marred more than the sons of men. That was in the Amplified. In the NIV it says, just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being, and his form marred, marred beyond human likeness. In other words, guys, you could tell that something had happened, but you could not tell what that was done to. Was it a human? Was it an animal? They don't know. There was so much blood. There was so much body that was ripped and torn apart that you could not tell. And guys, even though... Uh, we're coming into the week of, of what we celebrate, Easter, even though it's coming on later on in, in, in April, but just visiting with a friend about that, but on our time schedule, on, on our calendar, we're recognizing it here. This is the funny thing, though. Today's, when, today's Tuesday. We're going into tomorrow, of course, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Did you know within a few days, all of this that I'm reading to you right now, over 2,000 years ago was going to take place on a Friday morning. See, all the suffering, all the beatings, all the diseases allowed to be put within him, Jesus, all the sickness, all the sins and its death effects upon the body, the mind and the spirit of man, sin itself and the total separation of mankind and God himself. Jesus dealt with that. When all the sin from the beginning to the end of age, all the sickness and disease that mankind would ever know, all the separation from a loving father, all the torments in the mind, all the depression, all the oppression, like a human magnet, it was all drawn into the spirit of Jesus to be a spiritual dead man, all drawn into his body, to be sick and diseased, all drawn into his mind, to be tormented. I don't know why, but uh, my mind always goes during this time back to the movie of Mel Gibson that he did, uh, The Passion of the Christ. I meant... I can see how that movie was rated R. And the funny thing is, is even with how bad that is, I mean, guys, you're talking about people that are going to the movie theaters that when all this stuff was going on that I'm talking about at the whipping post, these people are having to look away. They're looking away, tears in their eyes. They couldn't, they couldn't bear to see what was going on. Their body tensing up at every blow. They're looking away, tears are coming down. That was not a Hollywood movie, to my friends. Thank God that Mel Gibson directed that and he did it. And it went back and showed that, did you know how horrible that movie was? And it was rated R. We get that. This is how horrible it was. You could plainly see who the person was before and after. But the Bible says that he was marred beyond human recognition. Every blow that took place, it said with that strap of leather and metal fragments that went and hit. You remember. I know right now, if you've seen that movie, right now I'm bringing back to your remembrance what happened. I remember the times when they did it and it went around his rib cage and it latched and they just pulled all that off. I mean, in my mind, I don't even know how the man caught up, but I love it. This is my favorite part in that movie. When that was going on, when he was being scorched, whipped, beaten, beyond human recognition, at the whipping post. And I'm talking about he's in pain. If he just would have stayed down when it drove him to his knees, maybe they wouldn't have went and they, they would have unchained him and just allowed him to lay there in that pool of blood. But he didn't. Jesus didn't stay there in that moment, stay down on his knees. I remember he struggled 
but he pushed himself back up. And the people, the Roman guards and the soldiers, they looked at one another like, are you kidding me right now? Why is this man getting up? And then they switched instruments and tools to go and to flog and to, to scourge him and to, and to beat him more. And then when they finally released him and let him down in that movie, I remember that he just laid there. As horrible as that was, as the times that we had to look away, that was nothing compared to happened, what happened in real life, guys. Did you ever wonder in that movie why he got back up? The part that I just mentioned in my mind and in my heart, I'm like, well, why did he get back up? And on the inside, I know that he got back up because there was more lashes, there were more beatings, there were more times that he had to be hit and beaten. Why? Because at every beating, every scourging, every time that he was whipped, every time that it lashed up on the body, every time that it hit blow after blow was a sickness. There was cancer. Another blow, AIDS. Another blow, diabetes. Another blow, kidney failure. Blow after blow. He was beaten beyond so many times that every disease and sickness in the world of the categories that it would fall on fell upon the body of Jesus Christ all at one time. Guys, there's sickness and there's diseases out there right now that mar human beings, that it disfigures them. That was all put it within the body of Jesus Christ. So that person didn't have to. I need us to understand that. In the same way that Jesus was separated from God and became sin, so the world can know you don't have to be separated anymore and you don't have to be sin. The Bible says that Jesus was made sin who knew no sin. Why? So that we could be made the righteousness of God in Christ. And also, you can look at it like this, and it says, and by Jesus' stripes we are healed. The, 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 Jesus was made sin who knew no sin. He was made sick and diseased who knew no sickness and disease, that we would become the righteousness of God and the healed of God in Christ. Guys, that's the gospel. That is what this world needs to know. I want you to look at John chapter 19, verses 28 through 30. It says, after this, Jesus, knowing that, that all was now finished, said in fulfillment of the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was placed there, so they put a sponge, soaked it in the sour wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and voluntarily gave up his spirit. Have you ever thought of why Jesus never turned away anyone? He never turned away anyone, not at one time, when it came to healing of the body. The multitudes came to him, and one by one, Jesus laid his hands on them, healing all of them. If Jesus died for every sickness and for every disease, which he did, then the moment that he said no to one, it's God's will that you remain sick and diseased with that condition, then that would have meant that he didn't pay for that one at the whipping post. Luke 4.40, listen to this. At sunset, the people brought all those who were sick to Jesus to be healed. All those. And then it says, Jesus laid his hands on them one by one, and he healed them all of different illnesses. See, Jesus healed everyone that came to him, not leaving any walking away with the condition of sickness and disease anymore. He knew that he was going to take upon every sickness and disease ever known, ever known within himself. To say to one of these people, no, on healing their body. To say, no, I can't. No, I won't. No, it's not God's will. Would mean that he himself allowed one of those sickness or, disease, sickness or diseases to land upon them instead of him. I'm going to say that again. The moment that Jesus looked at someone and said, no, it's not God's will to heal you. No, it's not my Father's will at this time that it would happen. Or no, I can't. No, I won't. Whatever the excuse would be for a man or a woman to come to Jesus and him not lay his hands upon them and heal them. The moment Jesus would allow them to walk away with the excuses, God doesn't want you healed of that. There's a reason behind your suffering. Just endure it. Would be the moment that Jesus did not die for that sickness and for that disease 
at the whipping post. Matthew chapter 8, verses 15 through 17. Look at, look at this. The moment Jesus touched her hand, she was healed. Immediately she got up and began to make dinner for them. That evening the people brought to him many who were demonized, it says. And by Jesus always speaking a word of healing over them, they were totally set free from their torment, and everyone who was sick received their healing. In doing so, Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. It says, He himself put upon himself our weaknesses and he carried away our diseases and made us well. Guys, this is past. This is why tonight it's called looking back. We're looking back of what happened so that we can enjoy the benefit package of today. Guys, we do that for forgiveness of sins. Why? What do you, how do we do that for forgiveness of sins, Nathan? Well, have you messed up lately? I know I have. And I know that God's not going to send Jesus down to die on a cross again to shed his blood. The Bible says there remains no more forgiveness of sins. There, there, there remains no more. Uh, not, in, other, in other words, there's not going to be any more bloodshed. There's not going to be another sacrifice. Jesus is not going to leave the throne at the right hand of God. He's not going to come down and lay upon a cross and allow himself to be crucified again. So I have to look back of what's already happened to enjoy the benefits of today, and we're doing the same thing when it comes to healing. To leave one person out of healing, guys, to leave one person out of healing them would mean that Jesus could not fulfill this scripture when it says, and he carried away our diseases and made us well. Jesus would not have fulfilled that, that, that prophecy if he would have allowed one person to remain sick and diseased. Again, to leave one person out of healing them would mean that Jesus could not fulfill the scripture. If only one time Jesus told someone that God wanted them to stay sick or that he could not or would not heal them would have made that prophecy that I just read to you void. And we know that that's not true. Look at Matthew chapter 15, verses 29 through 31. And the Amplified, it says, Jesus went on from there and passed along by the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up on the hillside and was sitting there, and great crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the crippled, the blind, the mute, and many others. And they put them down at his feet, and he healed them. So the crowd was amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crowd, the crippling, uh, the crippled restored. And then it says, and the lame walking, the blind seeing, and they praised and glorified the God of Israel. Isn't it funny that Jesus, out of all that, never turned any one of He never turned anyone away. If he doesn't turn anyone away when it comes to the forgiveness of sins, then he's not going to turn anyone away tonight when it comes to healing of your body. Guys, I want you to know this so much because what we're going to do at the end, and this is the simplicity of it. Guys, do we believe? Do you tonight? I know I do, and I and I know that you do too, but do we really, do we believe that the word is the same yesterday, today, and forever? And I know right now you're watching this and you're saying, well, of course I do. The Bible says that, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, there's no distance in the spirit. This is the same word that's going out over this tonight online as it is if we were at the uh, Midwest Sewing Center tonight preaching in person and you were there. It's the same word that you're hearing, same message that I would have been preaching, same word of God that I'm taking and giving to you. Wasn't it funny that Jesus spoke the word to the centurion's son, the soldier, and he was healed that, sal that, that, that same hour, even to the point to where Jesus was willing to go and heal him, it says. But the centurion said, no, I'm a man under authority and I understand that there's men that are under me. And when I say go, they go. And when I say come, they come. And I understand that if you'll just speak the word, that is enough. And Jesus did it. And what happened? The man was healed that same hour within that same day. Guys, I can send the word of healing tonight. And it's going to hit your body. And it's going to line up with the prophecy that was already spoken years ago. Why? Because just as much as you would receive. You, you know, this is my thing. If we don't expect someone to have to wait to receive forgiveness of sins, then why do we expect for them to wait to receive healing? If there was somebody that's on there tonight and they said, Nathan, I want to get born again, then I would pray for you right now alive, and I would believe the moment that I prayed it and the moment that you agreed and you confessed it would be the moment that you would get your benefits package of becoming a son of God and you would enjoy the benefits package part of what? 
forgiveness of sins, and you became a new creation in Christ. Well, why in the world does healing have to wait to come? Well, you know, it'll, it might come someday in God's sovereign time and will. No, that's not right. If we don't expect that for forgiveness of sins, then we're not going to expect it tonight for healing of the body. And it's fun that he says, it's funny that it says he healed them all. He healed them all. Right then and there. See, if we are waiting on God for the forgiveness of sins, then according to scripture, we don't need to wait on him for the healing of the body either. We're not waiting on God. We're not waiting on God for the forgiveness of sins. Then we don't have to wait for the healing of the body either. It's all by faith in his grace towards us. It says, forget not all of his benefits. Forget not the benefits. Well, what about the benefits of Psalm 91? Have we ever thought about that? Forget not the benefits of Psalm 91 for our protection in these times and the promises of a long, healthy life. We have to take a good, long look behind us to see the truth for us today. This has already been spoken of, but let's take, let's take it by force today. Look at this. Psalm 91, verses 1 through 16 in the passage. It says, When you abide under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God Most High. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me. The only God for me in my great confidence. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy. He will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from harm. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night, nor have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against you. Don't fear a thing, it says. Whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of the evil be launched against you, even in time of disaster with thousands and thousands that are being killed. You will remain unscathed and unharmed. You will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment, for they will be paid back for what they have done. When we live our lives within the shadow of the Most High, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm, it says. How then could evil prevail against us or disease even infect us? God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm, it says. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you to keep you from stumbling. You'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest powers of darkness, trampling every one of them beneath your feet. For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you've loved me, delighted in me, and have been loyal to my name, I will greatly protect you. I will answer your cry for help every time that you pray, and you will feel my presence in your time of trouble. I will deliver you and bring you honor. I will satisfy you with a full, long life with all that I do for you. For you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. See, we must stay under the umbrella of his word tonight. His presence, it gives instruction and correction to get us to our final destination of a long, healthy life, finishing our course. But I want us to remember tonight to take a good, long, long, long look back and to see that the blood of Jesus that flowed from his body purchased our forgiveness of sins and the healing of our sicknesses and diseases. Just as much as we look back to remember what was done on the cross, as done at the cross is the same way, guys, that we can look back and remember what was done at the whipping post. And did you know it's funny that when we look back and we remember what was done at the cross, we always take that into, into our today and into our tomorrow, knowing that we're forgiven. Praise God, we're forgiven. The blood of Jesus, it, remember it says, for without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Well, you could say, for without the whipping post, there is no healing of your sicknesses and diseases. God would agree with that. It was by the same body, the same man, the same blood that was shed at the cross, that was shed at the whipping post for your healing just in the same way as it was shed for the forgiveness of sins. Guys, I want us to know that tonight because God wants us. It's hard to go tell these people about the goodness of God 
and tell them that God wants them born again. He's not mad at them. He's already forgiven them of their sins. He's already provided the way. You just need to receive it and believe. It's hard to do that if these bodies are wrapped with pain and suffering and they can barely get out of the house because even though we're spirit beings, well, we need these bodies to take us from point A to point B because the Bible says to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. So as long as we're in these bodies, we need them healed, whole, restored, rejuvenated, walk in a perfection in health and healing so we can allow these spirits to go out there to tell the world the good news of the gospel. Well, God knows the importance of what I just said right now to you. That Well, to get the gospel out, he needs us healthy and whole. Well, how is he going to provide that? Through the beating of his son, he's going to provide healing of our bodies. So we can go down, go and tell the world the newness that he provided through the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Man, I hope this enjoyed. I hope that you enjoyed it tonight. I know I did. Um, guys, we're going to meet tomorrow at church at 728 North Main Street, Lori, Missouri, at the Midwest Sewing Center for Wednesday night church service. Guys, I, I want to pray with you tonight. Whatever's going on, I'm, where I'm at right now, of course, I can't see with the uh, video in front of me. I can't see what you're dealing with or maybe the comments that you are posting. But I want to pray with you tonight. I want to be able to minister to you and pray for you. So in the name of Jesus, as I stretch my hand out, I want you to stretch your hand out like you're touching my hand right now. All right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I come into complete agreement, Father, with your word. That by the beating and the suffering of Jesus Christ, right now, that by those stripes, by that beating, they're not going to be. They are the healed right now. Not in the future it'll come, but in the right here, right now, just as much as they're forgiven, is just as much as they're healed right now. And I speak to every sickness and disease, and disease. you have no right trespassing upon those bodies of these people. You were put on the body of Jesus and you were put to death over 2,000 years ago and that's what happened. So I call these people healed and whole and restored in their body and I command for every pain and every suffering to leave their body and I command for perfection of the blood of Jesus to flow mightily upon their bodies right now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Guys, I love you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Share this video. Get it out there as with many people as we can. Get it out there to those loved ones and all those people that need to hear the truth about healing. And I will see you tomorrow night in person or, of course, it's always online as well. For Church at the MHC, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.